and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today I'm going to be beginning a brand new preparation marathon covering the primary Conjuring film, starting, of course, with the first one, came out in 2013, and that's called The Conjuring. <laughs> <laughs> when a number of unexplained phenomena occur at the Perrin family's brand new home, they call in paranormal experts Ed and Lorraine Warren to investigate, only to discover that the grisly tale of a witch that haunts the land and is trying desperately to possess these people and do the unthinkable. So Ed and Lorraine do their due diligence and try to help this family get rid of their unwelcome house guests. A lot of people prefer this first film in the Conjuring universe for some reason that I've never fully been able to comprehend. I've seen this movie three times at this point, and I've more or less felt the same about it every single time that I've seen it. That is, you know, it's fine, but I, I, I don't see it as this big, unique, original horror film that takes the genre to new and different places, which uh, seems to be what everybody and their mom seems to think. In fact, for me, I've almost always seen it as the opposite, as horror trope central filled to the brim with stereotypes from beginning to end. I adore the sequel, Conjuring 2, but I never really understood all the hype over this film, but you know, hey, maybe third time's the charm, and this viewing changed things for me, did it? Well, before I get into maybe my hot takes when it comes down to this film, I did want to talk about and admit where this film goes right, and a majority of that comes right down to James Wan as the director. Wan, in my opinion, is a wonderful horror director. He can take the worst written horror film out there and successfully make it creepy. Just look at the first Annabelle film from 2014, which is a wretched film all around, but Wan directed one part of the movie, one scene, and it was that one scene that was actually pretty good and somewhat scary to a degree. So even though I'm not the biggest fan of this movie in general, I did love how it was shot and put together. James Wan clearly has an eye for horror, so I definitely say that this film does a great job with its creepiness factor. A part of directing horror, by the way, is getting the build-up right. If you get the build-up right, you can make the audience you know, want to look away because they know or at least suspect something's going to be coming to scare you, and The Conjuring is kind of infamous for that, whether that be through red herrings or actual moments that are supposed to scare you, you you're not entirely sure what the difference is you're always on the edge of your seat. I also want to mention that I actually do like Ed and Lorraine Warren, or at least who their characters are and what they represent, especially in this movie, where you see them giving people a rational explanation for a few of their claims for their houses being haunted or whatever. Usually, we just see them going along with what people claim to be experiencing, but it is nice to see them debunk some theories too. It makes their characters a lot more believable as people and just and not crooks. I'm not the biggest fan of Patrick Wilson's casting though. I don't, you know, I don't care for him as an actor nor do I think he knows how to act at all. He oversells it every time. Yeah. There's a demon here. We got to be careful because there's a demon here. Vera Farmiga is so much better as an actress, but yeah, I'm sorry, but I've just, I've never cared for Patrick Wilson. One of my core complaints about this film, however, is the fact that I can't pinpoint the central threat of the story. There's far too many things going on all at once. I think the idea is the house is supposed to be haunted by this witch, and that's fine, but the weird things that happen throughout the film, I just feel like they're all over the freaking place. The very first scene of the film introduces you to Ed and Lorraine Warren with the story of the Annabelle doll. And this entire scene is, in my opinion, horrible and pointless. I hate it. I hate everything about Annabelle in this movie, which is completely unnecessary and not connected to anything at all. Every now and then we'll see a completely random scene with Annabelle and then I just, I don't get it. What does she have to do with anything? What does she have to do with this family? Nothing. Leave Annabelle for her own movie and just focus on this haunted house, please and thank you. Beyond that, this first scene has a really weird filter that kind of looked amateur, kind of like an Instagram filter or something. Some of the acting in the scene is god-awful, hair and makeup is distractingly bad for me, you can tell where people are wearing wigs. I don't know, I just hate this intro scene. From there on out, we move to the main portion of the film and it jumps straight into even more stereotypes like the dog that doesn't want to walk into this clearly disturbing house. From there, the next scene introduces you to the boarded up cellar, Ooh, a room that smells like something died in it, clocks that stop 
At the same time, mysteriously dead animals all around the house. A ghost that grabs your feet when you sleep, that knocks on the walls throughout the house. Hey, there's creaking doors over there. There's static white noise coming from the TV, mysteriously opening windows. Oh yeah, and a child's imaginary friend who's clearly going to be a ghost, and that's all in the first half hour of the film. The list goes on and on and on. When I say they use every trick in the book, they use every trick in the book. It's so cliche. I have absolutely no idea how people consider this to be a fresh take on the horror genre. Again, I love the sequel, and I consider that to be more in tune with the personality of the universe. But I saw almost nothing in this film that felt new or fresh. I'll admit that there are a few scenes in the film, however, that are indeed memorable for being spooky, most notably with the hide-and-go-clap game that feels unique for this film and this film alone. The idea of a non-living thing, you know, clapping and off in the distance pretending to be a kid without you knowing it is incredibly compelling and terrifying. But I never liked how this film, right from the get-go, seems to show these ghosts as clear as freaking day. They aren't transparent, they're as solid as you and I, so obviously they're just an actor in makeup. I've always preferred the imagination, you know? Think back to when you were a kid, trying to sleep, afraid of the shadows of the dead tree branches outside, gliding across your walls and ceiling in the middle of the night. They're going straight for you, and you're watching silently, and it's like their fingers trying to grab you. It's terrifying. And that's something that I think the sequel kind of approaches a little bit better than this film. And I, I just think that this movie just leaves little to the imagination. All in all, I consider this to be an extremely average haunted house possession film that borrows from countless other horror films and horror cliches from beginning to end. However, it was shot very, very well. And it's the directing style of James Wan that sets this film apart from others, not the writing or the story. So let's take a look at my final score. From an unbiased technical level, I really do like how the film was shot, like I said countless times at this point. That's one area that I appreciated the most. I may roll my eyes at the idea of watching it again, but I do look forward to the directing style. Everything else, though, I thought was uninspired. I'm sorry. This score is 56%. My bias score, or how I felt about the film in general, this is slightly higher because even though I don't care for the story, I did think it was creepy enough, and in this day and age, creepy movies are getting harder to find because they aren't being smart with how they're filmed. A bad, scary movie can still be spooky if it's filmed right, and this is filmed right. But yeah, I actually get bored with the story, so... This score is 62%, averaging everything out to a final rating of 59%, 59 out of 100 possible stars, or a D-letter grade. I really don't understand the preference for this movie. I don't, I, but maybe you guys can clear it up for me in the comment section down below. What makes this film so good for you? What makes it so unique? Because I don't get it. Let me know. As for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button, and bell to be notified when I come out with the next review. Until then, peace out. Dave examines movies. We just watch for fun. Davey is the expert. He is the number one. Critic that I go to when I need a movie pick. Thanks for joining up with us.